Let's see an example of proof by induction. Proof by induction is often used to prove statements involving a natural number n. We want to show certain statement holds for all n, usually starts from 1 and 2 and 3 and all, or for, for all positive integers. So let's look at this problem. This is a very common kind of application of proof by induction. We have this sum, 1 plus 2 plus 3 and plus n, and we want to show this sum is equal to n, n plus 1 over 2 for all n. Now, before we start with the proof, let's try to understand what it means. So, for example, we want to see 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 over here, and we want to see this one is equal to 4 times 4 plus 1 and divided by 2. And look at the left-hand side, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, is e this is equal to 10. Okay. And we can verify the right-hand side, and this is 4 times 5, and that's 20 divided by 2, and that's 10. So obviously, it's going to be true. But of course, it doesn't matter how many times we verify this formula for, it cannot count as the proof. And to prove this one, we follow so-called the principle of mathematical induction. And the proof involves three steps. The first step, step one, we show this formula over here is true for n is equal to 1. So let's check this formula is true for n is equal to 1. If n is equal to 1, then what do we have? We have 1 plus, okay, now that's 1, and we want to show 1 is equal to 1 and 1 plus 1 over 2. And that is true. That's a starting point. And then the second step, we make a so-called inductive assumption. We are going to assume the formula holds. Assume the formula holds. for n minus 1. Now what it means is that we are imagining that we have proven this formula true for all n minus 1 cases. Last step is the crucial part. We're going to show that the formula holds actually for n. So this one over here and number 1 over here are really the starting point of the proof. But after we make an assumption, we want to make this assumption specific. What it means is that if we add 1 plus 2 plus 3 and plus n minus 1, and this is going to be equal to n minus 1 and n minus 1 plus 1 and over 2. And this is n minus 1 times n and over 2. So we are going to assume this is true. This is our inductive assumption. Now the third step is really the crucial part of it. Of course, neither of these two steps can be skipped. So, But the second one over here isn't really a proof. It's just an assumption. Now we want to show, we want to show We now want to show the formula holds for n. Show this formula holds for n. And how do we do that? Well, we'll look at this one. So now we are going to add up all these numbers to n minus 1 and additional 1 n over here. And how can we do that? We remember we now can use this assumption over here because we have assumed that the formula holds for n minus 1. So what it means is that now we are looking at the first n minus 1 terms. So look at this one over here. And we're going to use the formula in the assumption. So this one is going to be n minus 1, n over 2, 
and plus n. So we have used our assumption over here. And then this is equal to, if we find the common denominator, this is 2, and then n minus 1, and times n, and plus 2n. So this will be, if we factor n out, it's n plus 1 over 2. That means the formula holds for n terms over here. And after we prove this, then the proof ends.